this past week was um, very interesting because I went to my hometown. But I started the week in Fond du Lac. I stayed with Tammy and Joe. Fond du Lac is in Wisconsin. And I got there and I stayed with them and, you know, played with the dogs, cooked dinner, hung out. Uh, they had a bunch of zucchini that needed to be used up. And then I was walking to, trying to get to um, Plymouth, which is a bigger city. And it was, it was going to be 26 miles and that's a long day and but I thought okay you know that, that's where I gotta go that's where I gotta go well the minister Tammy and Joe's minister got a hold of me and he said I have a place for you to stay it's a retreat it's called Tree of Life and it's not in Plymouth it's in Greenbush which was actually 20 miles as opposed to 26 miles which let me tell you makes me happy and he's like it's run by the Lutheran Church it's really great I said all right that sounds good so I was walking into town, as I'm walking into Greenbush, I had set up with the host there that um, they would, uh, Bill and uh, Jeannie, that they would come, or Gina, that they would come um, pick me up when I got into town and take me out to the retreat center. Well, as I was walking into town, I was telling my mom, I don't have food, I guess we'll have to go get groceries, and um, I don't know, I'm... It, okay, I don't, don't have a host family tonight, but I have a place to stay. I hope it's not too far out in the woods, because how am I going to get back to my starting point? Well, I got to where we were going to pick us up, and she took me out to the retreat center. It wasn't that far out of town, but she offered to come and get me in the morning on the way to work. And she had made a picnic dinner, and she brought her son Dakota, and we sat out in, on the porch of the most lovely setting with a pond and a willow tree and um, this beautiful home that's uh, now the retreat center. There's a big conference center too, but I was in the cabin. The cabin is a two-story beautiful house with a fireplace and a tower with secret passageways into it. There were bookcases that pulled back and went into secret rooms. It was really neat. They, they usually put kids in that space, but they didn't have anybody there right then, so I was allowed to use it. And um, it was nice to just take a break and uh, not be social, actually. I still had a family for the evening. I still had somebody to pick me up and drop me off, but I took a nice hot, bath, hot shower and I got in bed and read, read a book. And I realized I, I didn't read a whole book. I just read a couple chapters. But I haven't read a book in four and a half months. I haven't gone for a run, I haven't gone to a movie. <laughs> Something strange about this project is that I'm, I'm, you know, the, the things that are a normal part of my normal life are not part of my traveling life. And I'm kind of getting to the end, I only have a week left, and I'm looking forward to doing some of those things. So anyway, I got up in the morning and she took me out to my starting point. Well there was a bicycle path that went all the way to Sheboygan. So I got to walk along this gorgeous, it was right along the, the highway there, but this is my fantasy, is that someday in this country, every highway and every interstate has a path like this, you know, 20 feet off of the main road where you could walk anywhere anywhere in this country and be on level ground because most of my walking is with high-speed traffic going past and me walking at a weird angle for 2,000 miles <laughs> so that was really nice um, I got to Sheboygan and my mom had connected me with Jeff and Susan uh, she talked to a guy at her church who had bicycled across the country and his son and their son went to college together they went to Calvin College which is where I have my show right now in Grand Rapids um, at their 106 um, downtown gallery and they had both graduated from there so they were they were kind of excited to host me it was fun but she had to get her hair done she had an appointment and he had a meeting so and it happened to be the opening of my gallery show at the 106 gallery so I set up Skype and I set up my live streaming and I would have this weird perspective of I'm looking at people looking at my artwork in a gallery and then they can come over and talk to me through Skype. Meanwhile, my host left and then I was kind of there, I'd made dinner, but it, not for them, apparently for me. And then it, when the wife came back, then she sat down and ate dinner with me. So I had a little bit of dinner and then waited because I wanted to have dinner with the family. And um, they were really nice people. So 
there is weird though because in the middle of our conversation I'd hear my mom say yoo-hoo yoo-hoo and she'd be on Skype you know in the gallery she'd have brought somebody over who had questions for me so it was a very kind of weird evening of like Sarah who runs the gallery she could hear me responding to her through Skype but being picked up by the live streaming playing behind her in delay <laughs> she's like this is very trippy <laughs> So I was virtually at the opening. Um, then I walked to Cleveland and stayed with Laura and Jim, who have 10 kids and run a dairy farm. And they took me, like, she kind of took me on a tour of her dairy farm with her uh, four-year-old who wasn't off to school that morning. So that was really neat. And um, I got to meet all the kids and eat. And the teenage boys actually really, really, I think they'd Facebooked all their friends to not let them know that there was some lady staying at their house. But meantime, they avoided being on the camera, if at all possible. <laughs> so they, like, ate dinner standing up rather than sitting at the table. <laughs> and ten kids is a lot. It's an awful lot. Um, I told her, you must have the patience of a saint. Because I think of parenting as being a practice in patience. <laughs> and you just multiply that by ten. But I had a really nice night stay, night stay there. Then I was walking to Manitowoc. And... Nothing had worked out to have a host there. She'd made a couple calls for me. I'd contacted some places there, and I'd contacted the Chamber of Commerce. Then I just thought, oh, well, you know, I, it's normal for me to not have anything lined up. And I walked into town relatively early. And I was in, then had an interview with the local newspaper guy. And I just asked him, I said, Is there, do you have any ideas of a place I can, you know, somehow I can find somewhere to stay tonight? He said, you know... Manitowoc is known for building submarines for World War II. I wonder if you couldn't stay on the submarine at the Maritime Museum. He said, let's, what, I don't, don't have time to take you over there, but I'll point you in the right direction. Go over to the Maritime Museum and tell, ask for uh, Wendy or Nora. So I went over and asked for them. And the woman at the front desk was kind of like, why and what? And, um, oh, well, we have a bunch of Boy Scouts coming and there's not really room for you. So I said, okay, fine, and I, I went over to an ice cream shop across the street, and I called the reporter back, and he said, call him if anything worked out or didn't work out. He said, oh, that's too bad. Well, while I was waiting in the ice cream shop, the woman from the Maritime Museum, who runs their education program, had apparently seen me walking down the street away from the museum, and she said, that's the lady from the from the newspaper, because I had an article in the Sheboygan News, Sheboygan Press. She said, stop or stop, we should, we should offer a place to stay. And the woman at the front desk said, oh, oops. <laughs> so they literally went out and drove around and looked for me. Then they went on the live streaming, figured out I was at the ice cream shop, which was a really cool old-fashioned candy store with, with the lights and the mirrors and the woodwork. And oh, it was gorgeous. So I got some ice cream there, a very good ice cream sundae. So anyway, they tracked me down that I was at the ice cream shop through my live streaming and invited me to come to um, the, uh, the museum and stay in the submarine, which sounded really cool. I thought that would be really cool. Well, I went, I got there, you know, waited for things to work out with the Boy Scouts. My, meanwhile, I was having terrible problems with my uh, internet connection, not because the connection was bad, but my actually my hotspot was having battery problems and wasn't powering up properly. Something was wrong with the plug. I've cleaned it out since then, it seems to work okay, but they actually sent me a new one because it was just getting really funky. Somehow walking, you know, 1,905 miles, <laughs> somewhere along the line, my little gizmo got a little tired. So it kept fading in and out. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the submarine, but we took a great tour of the submarine. Really neat. They kept those submarines at 100 degrees and that was the only field in the military where you were allowed to grow your hair out grow your beard wear shorts and flip flops <laughs> they would be on the boats for two to three months these are not big boats the sleeping quarters are literally sardines so i'm looking at this going well oh, this could be interesting then we get back to the maritime museum at this point it's 10 40 at night they had a snack then it was 10 40 at night and then they say, no time for activities. Well, I looked at one of the organizers and I said, is there any chance I can just go to sleep somewhere? 
And she said, yeah, we can put you up in the conference room. So I didn't end up sleeping on the submarine. I don't think I would have gotten any sleep on it anyway. And I'm a little claustrophobic. So I wasn't, I was a little sad because it would have been really cool to sleep on a submarine that was used in World War II. But at the same time, it was kind of nice that um, it wasn't, you know, uh, me not getting any sleep all night with like 55 Boy Scouts and their parents. Um, so that was, that was cool. It was very nice of them and it was really neat. I loved the tour. Um, and one of the things they said is this is still an operational submarine. Please don't touch anything. <laughs> Most likely to get scared of the Cub Scouts, but. <laughs> and then the next morning I got up and had some coffee and had a really nice chat with the girl at the cafe. And by then the, the news had come out in the Manitowoc news and it was, uh, I think on the second page or something. But anyway, they were all excited about that. Um, talked to a lot of people, went down to the docks, and my friend Karen, who is my best friend since fifth grade, took a round trip ticket, went from Ludington over to Manitowoc and to take the ferry back with me. And the, the internet actually worked almost out into the middle of the lake. I mean, I had about an hour there where there wasn't any feed, but not bad, not bad. And um, they had Wi-Fi on the boat, but it cost a zillion dollars, so I didn't really care. There, there could be an hour where there's no feed. And um, it was really nice to catch up with Karen, but something weird happened, which was suddenly, I didn't feel like I just walked a thousand and nine hundred and something miles. I actually felt like maybe I just took an airplane ticket to come visit my friend Karen. You know how with old friends, you feel like no time has passed? It just felt like that. She's been my friend since fifth grade, you know? Then um, my mom met us at the ferry. Unfortunately, the internet chose that moment. They were watching at the gallery, and the woman who runs the gallery said, here we are watching it, and we're getting off the boat, and it cuts out right before you get to your mom. <laughs> the perversity of technology. So all in one day, my zipper stopped working, my gizmo was going haywire and not charging, and then I get off the boat the next day and it cuts out just as I'm greeting my mom and she gave me a big hug and Karen said she wished she'd had a camera and thought she had a camera she wished she thought to take a picture she said because the look on your mom's face said clearly oh my baby <laughs> and then the next so that night I spent at Karen's house my mom and I went out my mom and Karen and I went out for a nice Italian dinner and then we went to I went to Karen's house and just hung out and you know, chit-chatted and caught up a little bit, went to bed too late, got up the next morning, and my mom and I walked uh, most of the way into Pentwater together. She walked six and a half miles, which let me tell you, for a lady who's turning 69 in a few days, is not bad. She's been training for months for this. She is so fit and healthy. I, I mean, she's she's dropped weight. She's oh, She just looks great. And my cousin Rachel then joined me for the next portion of it. Her son John, my little cousin, was having his birthday weekend and he wanted to go walk with big cousin Laura. And he was very excited about being on TV. And as we're walking along, he called his grandma to let her know that she could watch him. We talked to Rachel's mom, his other grandma, and then he wanted to call the other grandma. And he's so cute, he says to her, we're on TV, Grandma. You should. You have to see it. You have to look it up. He said, we're making an art piece together. And Rachel started to correct him. And I said, yeah, John, we are. We're making an art piece together. And she wrote me later to let me know that that was really special to him, that, they, that we, he was part of my artwork. And it's true. I have not done this by myself. This, this is a piece of artwork that was made by hundreds of people all across the country. It's really, really cool. And we all went to the Antler Bar and ate dinner there. The Antler Bar used to be a real dive with a bunch of animal heads on the wall at a pool table. You know, typical small town bar. Well, my town has gentrified a whole bunch. It is fancy. You are there. It's nice. And they even, like, even the animal heads look dignified somehow. <laughs> And it's just, my, my town looks the same, only it, it's like a lot of small town America. It either goes the way of collapsing buildings or goes the way of tourism. And somewhere in between, sometimes you'll find a small town that still has a pharmacy and a grocery store, but it's pretty rare. 
most of that's gone is Dollar General and Subway or it's a bunch of tourist shops. And it's that's one story that kind of makes me sad because growing up, every small town had a doctor and a pharmacy and a movie theater and a grocery store and a hardware store and a gas station, all owned by local people. And that money went to the community. And it makes me a little sad that that's, that's, that's a bygone era. But anyway, it was both beautiful and wonderful. It's kind of surreal to have my family come join me, you know, and have my old school friends. And go down and see the sunset. And it was the most beautiful sunset. It was absolutely fabulous. That's something my, I miss like crazy. And Lake Michigan put on a great show. The water was like glass, which I don't even remember ever being that calm. And the sun made, you know, beautiful clouds and the sun peeked out and gorgeous colors all over the whole sky. So that made me happy. And it, the live internet worked in my hometown. And that would not have been true two years ago. So anyway, all around, very exciting. And I have one week left to go. <laughs> one of the most exciting things about Sheboygan that I never didn't even mention to you is that I put my toes in Lake Michigan for the first time in four years. It is the lake at the bottom of my heart. And there's no other body of water in the world that can compare by my estimation. I absolutely love it. it and it was very strange to see it from the um, uh, Wisconsin side because it's a, it's a different game, you know? And then from the other side of the lake, it, it's more sandy, it, you know, there's, a, there's prevailing winds. So the Wisconsin side is more rocky and the pound or the pound water side that's my hometown the michigan side is more um sandy beaches so i just I, it was just so great to like go all the i walked up the coast and saw beautiful views of the lake and then took the ferry across i mean it's been just lovely the last week it's just been wonderful and then got to watch a sunset with my mom 